Every day on this channel, I cover everything that Elon said on X in the last 24 hours. And here's how many times Elon posted about each subject today. I will cover everything he said about each topic before moving on to the next one. And we have to start with Tesla. Huge congratulations to all Tesla shareholders. 75% of the vote in approval of Elon Musk's pay package. Quite the decisive statement by Tesla shareholders, says Michael Dell. Congratulations to Elon. And Elon says thanks. And congratulations to all you guys watching who happen to be Tesla shareholders. Yunta was at the meeting and he says, I cannot think of any company that holds the shareholder meeting at the factory. For most companies, they bring people to the design house offices while the factories fade into the background. But for Tesla, factories are the heart of our stories. And Elon reposted this. You were able to watch the meeting live. It was two and a half hours, but I will be posting a super cut on my channel shortly. And before the event, Jack Dorsey said, this is not about compensation. It's about ensuring a principled engineering approach to the company's future. And Elon replied with a heart. And Robinhood was matching people for moving their Tesla shares over to Robinhood. Get an uncapped 2% bonus on taxable and retirement transfers into Robinhood for portfolios with at least one Tesla whole share. Offer ends November 19th. Elon said, fire. And we saw this post the other day that new Tesla AI5 chip is going to be a massive improvement over the AI4 chip. Elon replied saying slightly different versions of the Tesla AI5 chip will be made at TSMC and Samsung simply because they translate designs to physical form differently. But the goal is that our AI software works identically. We will have samples and maybe a small number of units in 2026, but high volume production is only possible in 2027. AI6 will use the same fabs but achieve roughly twice the performance. Aiming for a fast follow to AI5, so hopefully mid-2028 for volume production of AI6. AI7 will need different fabs as it is more adventurous. So Brian said, Elon, this is quite an iteration. I imagine the AI6 will allow for more tokens to operate locally to allow for higher response times in the car or robot. I wonder when we get to the point where there's more tokens operating locally than cloud. I can't see any other company even close to this level of vertical integration. Elon said, given that far more electricity is accessible on a distributed versus centralized basis, AI edge compute on Earth's surface will probably be greater than 90%. Serious AI scaling that actually registers on the Kardashev 2 level at all must of course be done in space. Kardashev 2 refers to harnessing all of the energy of our star. And then Elon goes on, he says, by the way, the word token is not as good as bitstream in my opinion, and AI should be measured in terms of file size rather than parameter count as the physical constraints are memory, bandwidth, and operations. CyberCab replied saying, AI5 is the golden key of Tesla for the physical AI era. And Elon said, yes. And back when Elon was talking about the Kardashev 2 and serious AI scaling that actually registers on the Kardashev 2 level at all, must of course be done in space. And he said that AI edge compute on the Earth's surface will probably be over 90% because far more electricity is accessible on a distributed basis. Brian said, wow, the energy distribution aspect is interesting. This changes the calculus for some companies' plans. I can also imagine at some point more compute will process through Optimus than perhaps any other local platform. And Elon said, yes. And Andy Jassy from Amazon says that every cloud provider faces the same AI infrastructure challenge. Chips need to be positioned close together to exchange data quickly, but they generate intense heat, creating unprecedented cooling demands. We needed a strategic solution that allowed us to use our existing air-cooled data centers to do liquid cooling without waiting for new construction. And it needed to be rapidly deployed so we could bring customers these powerful AI capabilities while we transition towards facility-level liquid cooling. Think of a home where only one sunny room needs AC, while the rest stays naturally cool. That's what we wanted to achieve, allowing us to efficiently land both liquid and air-cooled racks in the same facilities with complete flexibility. The available options weren't great. Either we could wait to build specialized liquid-cooled facilities or adopt off-the-shelf solutions that didn't scale or meet our unique needs. Neither worked for our customers, so we did what we often do at Amazon. We invented our own solution. Our teams designed and delivered our in-row heat exchanger, which uses a direct-to-chip approach with a cold plate on the chips. The liquid runs through the sealed plate in a closed loop, continuously removing heat without increasing water use. This enables us to support traditional workloads and demanding AI applications in the same facilities. By 2026, our liquid-cooled capacity will grow to over 20% of our machine learning capacity, which is at multi-gigawatt scale today. 
While liquid cooling technology itself isn't unique, our approach was creating something this effective that could be deployed across our 120 availability zones in 38 regions was significant. Because this solution didn't exist in the market, we developed a system that enables greater liquid cooling capacity with a smaller physical footprint while maintaining flexibility and efficiency. Our in-row heat exchanger can support a wide range of racks requiring liquid cooling. It uses 9% less water than fully air-cooled sites and offers a 20% improvement in power efficiency compared to off-the-shelf solutions. And because we invented it in-house, we can deploy it within months in any of our data centers, creating a flexible foundation to serve our customers for decades to come. Reimagining and innovating at scale has been something Amazon has done for a long time, and one of the reasons we've been the leader in technology, infrastructure, and data center invention, sustainability, and resilience. We're not done. There's still so much more to invent for customers. And Elon replied to this saying, interesting. And over at Google, their CEO Sundar Pichai says that our seventh generation TPU Ironwood is coming to general availability. He says it's our most powerful TPU yet, 10 times peak performance improvement versus the TPU V5P, and more than four times better performance per chip for both training and inference workloads versus the TPU V6E. We use TPUs to train and serve our own frontier models, including Gemini, and we're excited to make the latest generation available to Google Cloud customers. Elon says impressive. And several data centers will soon demand one gigawatt of power starting early next year. You have one from Anthropic, XAI Colossus 2 in February, Microsoft in March, Meta in May, and OpenAI in July. There's the total facility power on the y-axis and the timeline on the x-axis. Colossus 2 looks like it's going to require the most power. The limiting factor says it looks like XAI is about six months ahead in terms of building the most powerful AI data center. As the rest of the thread shows, there's a lot of competition though, and it will be interesting to see if their lead approves to be durable over time. It's great to finally have some well-researched tracking information. We mapped their construction using satellite imagery, permits, and public sources, releasing everything for free, including commissioned satellite images and Elon reposted that. But then the AI investor posted this data saying that the Microsoft data center will be more than twice the size of XAI Colossus 2. And the timeline for that looks like 2028. So someone replied saying, LMAO, XAI builds Colossus 2 in about 13 months. You were talking about a Microsoft project which is not funded yet and it's three years out and will likely never be completed in any form which resembles the mock-ups. Meanwhile, Colossus 2 will be operational next year, and by the time 2028 comes, Colossus 3 will be planned and built at 2 to 3x the compute of Microsoft's still uncompleted project. Elon said, bullseye. And XAI said, today on site, we have over 2,000 workers building the world's most powerful computer. Thank you to the amazing, hardworking men and women of Memphis for all you do. And Elon reposted it. And XFreeze has been through the last six months of Grok Chat history, and he couldn't find a single day where he didn't use it. He says it's incredibly helpful in everything. What about you? And Elon reposted this. And he says to try Grokopedia.com, quoting a clip from his recent interview on the All In podcast. And we checked this out yesterday. SpaceX just got 8 million customers. Kalina says living in a rural area, Starlink is an absolute game changer. You don't have to worry about not having LTE connectivity. You can still make calls and send texts. And other internet services are connected to the power line. So if the power goes out, unlike other providers, you can simply plug your Starlink modem into your generator and you're back online. It's more affordable and a far better service. And there's no data cap. And Elon reposted that. And British Airways has signed a deal with SpaceX to make Starlink internet available at no cost to every passenger starting in 2026. The airline has about 300 aircraft in its fleet. And Elon reposted that as well. And we saw the other day when Elon said, great idea, lol, to Sundar Pichai when he was talking about bringing their TPUs at Google to space, cause data centers in space. And Sundar ended up replying saying, it's only possible because of SpaceX's massive advances in launch technology. And Elon replied to that saying, thanks, SpaceX team is incredible. All done without AI so far, even Starship. With AI, I can't even imagine the possibilities. And SMX took a screenshot of that saying, two big tech bros casually chatting about the future, only on X. And Elon reposted that. And Simp for Satoshi says, does Elon know that his purpose isn't to save the US, but to herald the voyage to a new world on Mars? Elon says, if America falls before consciousness beyond Earth is self-sustaining, it is game over, maybe forever. 
So Robin quotes that saying, Elon's end goal is and will always be a self-sustaining civilization on Mars. Every single side quest is either to fund it or to stop Earth from dying before that happens. Can't have Mars when humanity is wiped out here on Earth. Elon replied saying, if civilization drops below the tech level needed for interplanetary spaceflight before making life multiplanetary, that could be the end of consciousness. Beth Jezo said, correct, we cannot afford a dark age at this time. We have an opportunity to pass the great filter for the first time ever, but also perhaps the last. And Elon said, yes. And this picture was taken on Mars just yesterday, and Elon reposted it. Mike P says, I love how SpaceX solved the multi-decade problem of no internet or shitty internet on airplanes just as a little side hustle. Adam Doyle said, with space lasers, no less. And Elon replied saying, yep. And it's worth noting that space debris aren't a real problem there. All of these satellites are and will be in low Earth orbit. At these altitudes, there is still some atmosphere, which means anything unpowered, including debris, will re-enter in 15 to 20 years and burn up. It's self-cleaning. And Elon said, true. And Dogen says that it would be nice to add music to some posts on X, that X desperately needs some music features. And Elon said, I agree. And Sky News says that the X algorithm prioritizes sending new users right-wing leaning content. Doge Designer said this claim is completely false. The X algorithm doesn't push any political side, it simply shows content people engage with. The algorithm shows what you are interested in, what you like, what you engage with, and what you share. It reflects your interests, not any bias. Elon says, it's sending me annoying left-wing content, to be honest. Omar says, why is my feed for the past two days full of people debating whether matrix multiplication is two-dimensional and whether we need to make more electrons? What's happening? Mark Andreessen said, we need to make more electrons. And Elon said, a lot more. And moving on from technology, let's hear from Jennifer Welch and what she said to Mehdi Hassan at Zoran's victory party. <laughs> you can't really hear her, but she said that Americans have no culture except for multiculturalism. Crusty white people need to learn how to embrace it. Matt Walsh said, This is the enemy. Wretched evil parasites. Motivated by resentment and hatred. Openly plotting to erase our culture and identity and replace it with a dystopian communist hodgepodge of third world dysfunction. This is the fight for now and the future. Get in the game. This is it. Curiosity said, How white leftists see themselves after complaining about white people online. And there is Khaleesi. Elon says, bullseye. And here's some groipers at Zoran Mamdani's election party celebrating his win. If you ever needed more proof that this is a psyop to divide the right and have the left win, here it is. Ain't no fucking way, bro. Yo, you got it. Yo, you ballsy with that fucking hat, nigga. Wait, yo, yo, yo. This I love your content. This fucking ballsy. Wait, what's your name, bro? Armando. Uh, Armando. Yeah. Are you Mexican? I'm descendant, yeah. You're a Mexican groiper, bro. Yeah, exactly. Just like, just like Nick Wood does. Yo, you're gonna make this shit hot, bro. Get the fuck away from me, nigga. Yeah, yeah, Elon said 100. And the rabbit hole says the radicalization of American women is going to impact our politics for a while. Last night was just another reminder as liberal women continue to be on the rise with conservative men. TVD says colleges and universities are filled with far left professors who use their classrooms to force anti American and progressive ideologies onto students. Quoting stats that voters aged 18 to 29, 84% women for Mimdani, 68% men. Elon says 100. And here are the rest of the statistics in case you guys are interested. Elon says 100. Wilfred Riley says you can't have welfare and mass immigration. Elon says absolutely. Free money from the US government creates a massive forcing function for anyone with less than that, which is like 90% of Earth, to move to the US which then sinks the entire system. Zoran said the other day that we will prove that there is no problem too large for government to solve and no concern too small for it to care about. Chip Roy said one of the worst quotes in American political history, reject this, live free. Elon said the government is just a big version of the DMV. How much more do you want the DMV to do? And here's Elon explaining why government efficiency matters. I mean, North Korea, they're starving. South Korea, it's like amazing. It's night and day. Yeah. Um, and so in the North, North Korea, you've got 100% government. Um, and this, in South Korea, you've got probably, I don't know, 40% government. Yeah. It's not zero. Uh, and yet you've got a standard of living that is probably 10 times higher in South Korea. At least. At least, exactly. Um, 
Uh, and then East and West Germany, um, in West Germany, uh, you, you had, just thinking in terms of cars, I mean, you had BMW, Porsche, Audi, Mercedes, and East Germany, which is a random line on a map. The only car you could get was a, a Trabant, which is basically a lawnmower with a shell on it. And uh, it was extremely unsafe. Uh, you, you, there was a 20-year wait. <laughs> <laughs> So you like, you know, put your kid on the list as yeah. soon as they're conceived. Even then, only, I think, um, you know, a quarter of people w maybe got, got this lousy car. Mm -hmm. And it's the same. It's so, so that's just an interesting example of, like, basically the same people, different operating system. And Elon had reposted that clip of moving on Mamdani 1 due to transplants and lost among people from New York City. For people who were actually born in New York, Cuomo 1. Vittorio says, and this, kids, is how you democratically conquer a country. As people who are in New York for less than five years, 71% of them voted for Mamdani. Elon said, bullseye. So Mario says, being nice isn't bad until it breaks your country. Help people, yes, but stop lighting your own house on fire to keep others warm. That is suicidal empathy. And Elon reposted this. And Jacob Frey has officially defeated Omar Fatah in the race for mayor of Minneapolis. Minnesota, of all places last night, rejected socialism. There is still hope for the future. Animals Daily said words that are still relevant. Theodore Roosevelt's ideas on immigrants and being an American in 1907. We have room for but one flag, the American flag. We have room for but one language here, and that is the English language. And we have room for but one sole loyalty, and that is a loyalty to the American people. Elon said 100. And Sidney Sweeney was given an opportunity to apologize for her American Eagle ad. The criticism of the content, which was basically that maybe specifically in this political climate, like white people shouldn't joke about genetic superiority. Like that was kind of like the criticism, broadly mm -hmm. speaking. And since you are talking about this, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about that specifically. I think that when I have an issue that I want to speak about, people will hear. So this user paraphrases it saying, in this political climate as a white woman, I want to give you an opportunity to apologize for saying you have good genes. And Sydney said, no. And Elon had a laugh at that one. Andre says, Spinoza speaks of this. No, he doesn't. Did you read any of his books? No. Did you? No. Elon asks Grok to summarize Spinoza in one word. And Grok said, necessity. Everything is God or nature unfolding exactly as it must. Understand that and you are free. So that is everything that Elon said today. He said that serious AI scaling must be done in space. And Google seems quite serious about getting their TPUs to space, as does Elon and his chips. SpaceX got another Starlink deal, and uh, Elon found Amazon's liquid cooling ideas interesting. As we know, Elon works fast, and he might be looking to implement some of those. Regardless, there is so much information that was thrown at us today from the Tesla shareholder meeting. I'm going to start diving into that and try to get out some more videos for you guys today. But again... Huge congratulations to everyone. Today was a huge day. And if you guys want early access to these daily videos, you can gain access by joining the channel as a member. And I will see you guys tomorrow.